bow down. All right. Ready? 388 at the bottom. Oh, come all ye faithful. Let's sing. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord, sing chords of angels, sing in exultation. Oh, sing, all ye bright hosts of heaven above. Glory to God, oh, glory to the highest. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, Turn back to page 366. 366 at the bottom. Key of C, brother. <clears throat> Christ the 
Well, it is good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Let's pray for, uh, I got a text from Miss Laura. Uh, Joe's in the hospital over here at Morristown Hamblin. And the doctors already told him that they are going to keep him tonight uh, for observation. He's got staph in his bloodstream. He's got strep throat. A pretty sick man. So they had him to the hospital, was it yesterday? I think it the day before yesterday. And uh, he, they let him come home, but he's, he's not doing too well. So remember him in prayer. Pray for my wife. Uh, she's pretty sick, so remember her in prayer as well. Uh, Brother Greg and them will be leaving out this weekend. They'll be gone, so pray for them while they're traveling. They're fixing to go see Andy. They met up Mount Airy, so it'll be a good trip for them. So pray for them while they're traveling. Let's remember the service tonight. Uh, God knows what we need, and there's enough here to preach to. You know how I know that? Where one or two are gathered together in my name. Amen. And so I want to try to share the word of God tonight. We'll have some singing. Anybody else got a prayer request before we pray? Amen. How's he doing? Yeah, amen. Remember that in prayer. He's got that cancer, so remember that. Uh, anybody else for pray? prayer? Amen. Amen. Remember that when you pray. Amen. Anybody else? All right. We come to church sometimes, and we think, man, we're having a rough time. I got a phone call yesterday, and a 21-year-old girl that went to church with Brother Chris that comes here, uh, he said, I watch her grow up. We got a five-month-old baby, dating this boy. So they're driving down the road, and he takes a gun and shoots her, kills her, and pushes her out of the car at a high rate of speed. So she's dead, needless to say. Got that five-month-old, and uh, the family, Brother Chris, said is very, very tore up about it. So, man, just pray for them. God knows that need. Amen. God can use anything to point others to Christ. So let's pray that God will use that to speak to their hearts. Anybody else for we pray? Amen. 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 Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What's his name? Michael. Now he came once, did yeah. All right. Remember that. Remember that in prayer. Amen. Let's pray. Pray for Michael. God get hold of his heart. Anybody else before we pray? All right. Brother Dwayne, if you would lead us to the Lord in prayer. Let's call on the Lord tonight. God knows what we need. And you pray that God will speak to hearts. There will be people watching this, listening to it. Pray that God will take the gospel and convict somebody and they'll get born again. Amen. And that be sure would be a blessing. Pray God will encourage the saints of God. We're living in discouraging days. If you watch the news, that's the reason I don't watch the news anymore. I'm about, I'm about sick of all the fake news and all the lies that's going on, so I just don't watch it. If I want no news, just get in the book, amen? It's the good news. Brother Dwayne, pray for us. Ask God just touch this meeting tonight. Oh, yes. Lord, thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, that we can come tonight. Open your precious word. Ask you tonight, Lord, if there's one that under the sound of our voice somewhere that Jesus, I pray that the Holy Spirit will fill their heart and they'll be born again. I pray tonight, Lord, for these prayer requests that have been made. Ask you, Lord, Miss April's got an unspoken request. You know the needs. Ask you, Father, that you might grant it according to your will. Pray God for Brother Greg mentioned his son, Michael. I pray God for him. He's supposed to be here Sunday. I pray, Lord, you'll already right now begin to deal with his heart. And, Lord, he'll get back in the house of God and get right where he needs to be. I pray for my wife. You'll touch her tonight. Pray, God, that you'll just, God, let her give her uh, body healing. And I pray, God, that you just move and do that work. 
that needs to be done there. And I pray for Brother Joe Gibson, Lord, that you'll touch his body. He's a very sick man. And got that uh, staff in his bloodstream. And I pray, God, that you'll touch him. And Father, just take care of his uh, needs physically, mentally, emotionally. Father, touch him and heal his body if it be your will. Then I pray, Lord, for that young lady's family, that 21-year-old girl. Lord, that, uh, that uh, young man took her life. I pray, God, that you'd meet the needs there in those families. God, pray for that little five-month-old baby, Lord, that you'd, Lord, just comfort that baby and be with them. And, Lord, use that, that it might point others to Calvary. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us, God, as a church. Lord, we may be few, but thank God that we're, you're on the throne. And it doesn't matter if there's many or few, you're still God. And I praise you for that. I pray you'd preach us tonight, sing uh, those that sing. I pray you'd touch them, anoint them with the Holy Ghost of God. And encourage the saints of God tonight. We'll praise you, give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Anybody got a word of testimony? Brother Danny, you come on, going to sing for us. Anybody want to brag on the Lord? Amen. I'm glad I'm saved. It ain't hard. If you're saved, just say, thank God I'm saved. Amen. It'll do you good. The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. I remember when Anthony come down and got saved, and uh, I've been watching God work in his life, and I, I like it when people change and God starts working in their life. Amen. And, uh, you know, you, you, somebody told me the other day, he said, man, I had revival meeting, and he said, uh, we, when we had revival, he said, there was about, I don't know, I think he said 75 showed up. I said, well, that's a blessing. That's a real blessing. He said, not when you're used to running 400. I said, 75 still better than what most are having. Better, I'm going to tell you what's better. Than, a lot of these preachers need to thank God that anybody would come near them. Amen? Hey, I'm telling you something. Better thank God if God's going to use you. And there's a handful of show up. I told him that. I, I said, he said, well, that encouraged me. And I said, well, you got to get it in your head. I'm coming. If, if Brother Don shows up, I'm going to preach to him. Brother Rodney shows up, I'm going to preach to him. I come here to worship the Lord. Amen. So you, you just, man, enjoy what God's going to do for us tonight. But Danny, come on. God bless you. Amen. Listen to the words of this song, Greatest of All Miracles.
Yes, I know what Jesus did for me. I believe there is power in the blood of the Lamb, and I believe there is healing in the touch of Jesus did for me. Yes, I know what Jesus did for me. A lot of things I don't know, but I know what the Lord done for me. I was there when it happened. Amen. And if you're not born again, you need to get born again. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. Anybody else want to brag on the Lord real quick before we get into the preaching? Amen. I'm excited about what God's got for us tonight from the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. When you find your places, say amen. And uh, then we're going to get in the Word of God. We'll read it together. Let the text talk to us. Amen. Keep it in context and see what the Word of God has to say. Uh, there was uh, much controversy, and I've just about quit Facebook. People, if you if you see me don't answer, I just I'm about over that stuff. All they do is fuss and fight and quarrel and gripe and carry on with a bunch of foolishness. That's and that's it. And then then we'll say, well, we need to show grace. And then the same ones that say that are slinging mud at somebody else because they don't agree with them or they don't believe like they, and they're just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then here's the problem. Sinners are watching it. People are not born again. They're watching it. Amen? And so I'm just saying, I don't know about anybody else, Brother Dwayne. I don't even know about you, but I know about me. I was there when it happened. I got born again. And the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of me. And I don't need somebody to tell me how to live. Amen. That book will tell you that if you rightly divide the word of truth. First Corinthians chapter number three, let's stand. We start at verse number six. And I want to I want to finish up tonight, Lord willing, about the church members. Uh, we've been talking about them. First of all, they got to be converted. Got to be born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb of God to be a church member. And when I say that, I'm not talking about a member at Mount Moriah. I'm talking about being in the body of Christ, being a part of the bride, being a part of the building, fitly framed together and letting God put it together. So the members got to be converted. We covered that. We went down the Romans road. Then the members ought to be continual. Uh, everything, everything that happens in your life should make you want to stay at the house shouldn't make you want to quit never seen a day I mean people are standing to look you in the eyeball right in the eyeball and say man I'm, you, I'm glad I'm part of this church thank God I'm part of this church boy I just can't wait to be back and then you don't see them again when are you going to grow up and quit riding this emotional roller coaster and just get over it, amen? Get a little maturity about you and get settled and continue on with God no matter what everybody else does. People are going to disappoint you. I promise you one thing, right here's no boy that will disappoint you. I will disappoint you. If you think I won't, you're mistaken. I will hurt your feelings. I will upset you. I'll do something. You know why? Because everybody looks for me to mess up. And they will find it. And guess whose fault it is if they quit church? Right here. Don't care. Can't do nothing about it. If I'm wrong, I'll apologize. There's some things you just can't fix. Some people just need to grow up and continue on. So we preached on that. And now we talk about church members, how we are to cooperate. Notice, if you will, verse number six. And, and Paul's writing, and the, the occasion is the church of Corinth is into it. They're fussing and fighting, and they're full of carnality. 
I heard a preacher preach years ago about carnality. He said it was Dollywood and Pigeon Forge and going camping and going to the mountains and taking a boat to the lake. And he's calling that carnality. And I said, I'm like, you're crazy. I think what Paul said, carnality. Paul said carnality among you, there's divisions, envy, strife. Amen. You're spiritually cussing each other out talking about each other, gossiping. And so, so Paul, he, he's addressing this. And notice what, when, when you get to the book of Corinthians, I don't know why anybody would name a church Corinth. It's the most carnal church out of every church that Paul wrote to. And all they're doing is fussing and fighting. That's all they're doing. So here's what he done. One said, I'm of Apollos. One said, I'm of Paul. And they went on down the line. So Paul wanted to clear it up. He said, I planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we're laborers together with God, you're God's husbandry, you're God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I've laid the foundation, another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. Father, bless the reading of your precious word. Use us tonight, Lord, for a few minutes to be a help and encouragement, Lord, to the folks that are sitting under the sound of our voice. And I pray the Holy Ghost would just speak and move and do that work that only he can do. And I pray, God, you'd get us out of the way that we could see the Lord Jesus lifted up and, Lord, highly exalted above measure. I pray there would be no isms and no schisms in the body, in the bride, in the building. Lord, we'd labor together and cooperate with the Holy Ghost of God to get some things done. Thank you for loving us. Save that sinner that's nearest hell. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. Now, the church members should be a cooperative people. First of all, and I covered this, they ought to cooperate with the pastor. Amen. And it's not because I'm standing here tonight. I would say it if I wouldn't. If, if I wouldn't pastor, I still believe you ought to cooperate with the pastor. Amen. <clears throat> That's the right thing to do. God is the He's the He's chief shepherd. Then the man of God's the under shepherd. And then the, the flock is to follow the shepherd as he follows God. And if he's following God and the word of God, then you're to follow him. I would not dare go against a preacher who preaches and rightly divides this book. If he corrected me and he's in the book, then you stand corrected. Say amen to that. So anyway, you cooperate with the pastor. I covered all that. Now, I want to move secondly, not only to cooperating with the pastor, but you need to cotton it. And it's, this is what gets me. This really gets me. When you, when you talk about cooperation, you say, well, I'll cooperate with the pastor, but I ain't going to cooperate with Brother Danny. And if you think I'm going to get along with Brother Rodney, you're crazy. And if you think I'm going to get along with Brother Dan and Brother Greg and Brother Dwayne, you're nuts. I don't have to get along with them. Well, let's see if you do or not. Let's see what the Bible says about you getting along with each other. Can I get an amen out of that? If you're not going to cooperate with each other, then don't worry about trying to get the Holy Ghost to get you to do anything. You're wasting your time. Can I get an amen out of that? Now, it's about respect. It's what it is. It's about respect. Respecting each other. Learning to deal with each other's problems. Learning to deal with each other's little habits that you don't like. Hello. There are going to be things about people that you can't stand, but you still got to cooperate with them if you're going to go to church with them. Now, if you don't want to go to church with them and cooperate with them, I suggest don't go to church because it's going to be that way wherever you go. Amen? So it's about respect. And if there's no respect for the pastor, the people, there will be no respect on down the line. And I've see, I see it all the time. These punk kids think they don't have to respect nobody. Amen. I'll tell you what, we need a lot more woodsheds. A lot of things got settled at the woodshed. My problem was I never made it to the woodshed. They'd start, 
We didn't have a woodshed. We just got whipped everywhere. They, everywhere you messed up at, that's where you got whipped. And I'll tell you something about my mom and dad. They never did forget to whip me. You know why? Because they done it right then. They never did say, well, what do you get home? They done it right in front of everybody. They'd paint your little head off. But they taught you respect. Amen? Uh, they don't respect the police. They don't respect the parents. They don't respect principals. Amen? If there's uh, young people sitting in a waiting room and elderly people comes in, I don't care if they're in a, with a walker. These young people ain't going to get up. They don't respect them enough. That there used to be some respect. So that's kind of what I'm dealing with tonight. Now, we, we've got to cooperate with the pastor, but then number two, we've got to cooperate, cooperate with the program. Somebody said, what do you mean program? I ain't, going, I ain't going to no church where there ain't no program. Well, I can tell they, some churches have no program, period. It's a free-for-all. If you don't speak in tongues, speak in tongues. Women won't preach. They don't care. Guys, tell me last night, he said, I, he, I, I told him I was wanting to look at a couple of missionaries coming by. He said, I got a good one. I said, was he doctrinally sound? What do you mean doctrinally sound? He said, I said, what is he? What's his background? Where's he from? Is he King James? I don't want no guy coming in here with the NIV Bible after me making a stand on it. I'm not doing that. And then I'm not going to have a guy come in here and speak an unknown tongue when the Word of God said those things have ceased. So you got to have a program. So what's your program? It's this book. Amen. Now I'm going to give you three. Let me give you three programs that are important to have in the church. Number one's a program of praise. Guess who ought to praise the Lord? Come on now. Well, I, I just ain't one to praise God. Well, go against the book. But the program God set up is when you come to my house, you praise me. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. All these preachers who got all their ministries, they're getting the praise. They're getting the glory. They'll show up 15 minutes late to any meeting because they demand. Hello? We're not to praise a man. If you start praising me, you're doing the wrong thing. Never lift me up. Never lift anybody in this church up. Only exalt the Lamb of God. This church can do without me. They can do without you, but they sure can't do without the Lord. Oh, Abraham, in this program of praise, it starts out in Genesis chapter 22 and verse number five. And Abraham said to the young men, abide ye here with the ass and I and the lamb will go yonder and worship. First time the word's ever mentioned. You know what they're doing in worship? He's offering his son as a sacrifice. Amen. Praise, praise is not all about you jumping up and down and running in the pews. It ain't all about that. People praise God in different ways. I've seen people never say a word and tears just stream down their face. They're just praising. I've seen some get up and wave their hand. I've seen some wave one hand. I've seen some get up and dance. I've seen it. I was preaching one night in a tent back in May two years ago, and this colored lady, I was preaching that message, I am such, and this colored lady, I mean, she said, she told me before service, said, I go to the First Baptist, but I've been listening to you on the radio, and she said, I wanted to come see you in person. I said, well, I hope the Lord will touch you. She said, I hope so too. And she sat there, real refined, real dignified, and boy, the Holy Ghost got in there, Miss Sydney. That little gal come out there shouting and dancing, and I'm not talking that bunch of foolishness. She was praising the Lamb of God, and she's running around going, I'm such a, I'm such a, I'm such a. Everybody in there wasn't shouting and running like she was. Others, you worship different. Do you know what liberty of worship is? You know what liberty really is? If you're in the Holy Ghost, you've got liberty. If you've got the Holy Ghost at Mount Moriah, we've got liberty. You know what liberty is, Brother Greg? Liberty is you letting me be me and me letting you be you. Everybody ain't gonna testify. Everybody ain't gonna, but I'm gonna tell you what everybody can do. Everybody can praise. There ain't no reason you can't praise. Amen? So you start out with sacrificing. 
If you don't sacrifice, you don't worship. Boy, get quiet on me on this and on me. If you don't sacrifice, you don't worship. First time the word's ever mentioned, Abraham's offering his son, and here's what he said. I'm gonna take my son up on the mountain and I'm gonna kill him. By faith, Abraham already killed him. Sure he did. But here's what he said. If I go, if I go take my son and I slay him and I kill him, he said, God will raise him from the dead. Because here's what he said. Me and the lads going yonder to worship and we will come again. He was so in tune with the will of God, he was willing to sacrifice anything to worship the Father. Amen? Psalm 5, verse 7. David said, as for me, I'm gonna come into the house, into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in fear will I worship toward the holy temple. Psalm 29, verse 2. Give unto to the Lord the glory due unto his name. Let me tell you something. People are more excited about this building than they are God. Hello. When we start worshiping these pews and these walls and these handrails and these lights and this parking lot. When we start doing that and you're giving glory to that or glory to any other man, you missed it. Give God the glory due to his name. I promise you one thing, you get the worst in this building, you'll find you another pastor. Amen, preacher. Amen. I'd rather be in a storefront building with a handful of people that want to give God glory due his name as to have a thousand sitting in here and God not get the glory. Amen. I'll give glory due to his name. I'll worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Psalm 95 verse 6, he said, Oh, come, let us worship. Let us bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. So there's the program of praise. Can I ask you a question? Look up here a minute. They just a handful of us, probably 10 or 12, but I'm going to ask you a question. What allows you to sit there and never praise God? What gives you the right to do that? I've got a question. Well, I don't, I don't have to do it. According to the Bible, you have to. According to the Bible, you're supposed to. I said the program, and it's right here, and it's praise. You know what the Bible said about the Lord? And here's what's, here what's crazy. Here what's crazy. Miss Cindy be sitting there worshiping. April be sitting there like a knot on a log. And I'm not saying you do. I'm just saying, I mean, the glory can fall right here. And you're sitting there thinking, well, that's, all, that's a bunch of emotionalism. And she's just all, you know, she's tore up from the floor up. And, and I, I just don't act that way. Let me, let me say something to you. If you come in here worshiping God and the beauty of his holiness, he's liable to meet just with you and nobody else. I believe that. I've seen him do it. You want God, in, you want God to inhabit this place? Then you praise him. He inhabits praise of his people. So we got a program. One program is to praise. Amen? And if you're going to praise anything, praise him. Every time you come in this building, you ought to want to praise and worship him. Now, here's what they say. As you mature in the Lord, as you grow in the word, you stop all that foolishness. I'm worse now than I've ever been in my life. If I, I'm telling you, Brother Dwayne, if I feel like the Holy Ghost was in, is within a quarter inch of me, I want him. If I feel like he's coming through here and he's blowing his breath a little bit, I want to get in on it, amen? I want to do what I can do just to praise and worship him. Why? Maybe, maybe he didn't bring you from where he brought me from. But I'm going to tell you one thing. He brought me from a hell hole in a horrible pit. And he brought me up out of it. And he saved me. And he set my feet on a solid rock. Praise him. You ever heard, you ever see these Pharisees? You, you know who they are, don't you? 
Those Pharisees, they're full of religion. They know more than you know about God or anything else. And they've always got an answer. I don't care what you say to them, they have an answer. They're Pharisees. Now, they're clean. Oh, they won't spit on the sidewalk. They won't eat out on Sunday. won't buy gas on Sunday. I mean, they're clean. They don't have a television. God forbid they stay up past 8 o'clock on any night. They're always up at 5. And they're praying and worshiping. They're Pharisees. So if you get in here and you get to worship and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost just gets on you a little bit and all of a sudden you jump up and you go, Whoa! They're going to say, well, I doubt if God's in that. That's a bunch of them mostly. He's a shouting in the flesh. So a lady said that to me. She said, all you do is shout in the flesh. I said, ma'am, that's the only way I know to shout because I'm in my flesh. Y'all, y'all getting that? I don't, know, I don't know how to shout any other way. All I know is that sometimes it gets so much real on the inside of me. It's like an artesian well. Spring it up. And you can't contain it. You know what? I'm praying. I, some of these deadbeats that come to church every once in a while, I pray, I'm going to pray one of these days the Holy Ghost just get on them and make them shout all over the church house. Just get you a taste of it. Program of praise. Uh, Brother Langston said, that crowd will sit around and judge everybody else. See, Brother Dwayne ain't got no right to weep and cry and shout. Brother Danny don't have no right, but now I do. And what Brother Danny's doing when he's crying, it's all fake. Brother Langston said, just because your fan ain't turning, don't mean the wind ain't blowing. Praise him. You have a right to. You know why? You're, t- you're his kid. Amen. I had, I had a guy tell me one time, he said, he said, that, well, I'll testify if the Holy Ghost nudge me. He shouldn't have said that to me. Let me tell you why he shouldn't have said that to me. If I have to call my kids and say to my kids, will you call me back and tell me you love me? It ain't worth nothing. Don't you think the Lord every once in a while without nudging you would like for you to just get up and say, Lord, I love you. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for supplying my need. I thank you for watching over me. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in my life. That is praise, and there's nothing wrong with it. Program of praise. Number two, program of prayer. When you take prayer out, you missed it. Amen. People say, well, you're a prayer. On Wednesday night, I'm in prayer. Well, we call it prayer meeting, but we don't ever pray hardly. Amen. Can I give you a couple of things? Second Samuel 7, 27. For thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, hast revealed to thy servant, saying, I will build thee in house. And you know what God said? I'm going to name it. The house of prayer. I'm going to call it the house of prayer. Isaiah 56, 7 said, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. You want to you call it the house of prayer, but you don't want to pray? Matthew 21, 13, he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. Everything goes on in the church house but prayer. Amen. There's more football discussed at church than there is anywhere on this planet. There's more things sold at church than there is anywhere on this planet. And we don't never hardly ever come through the door just wanting to pray and wanting to praise. That ought to be our program. Amen. I'm telling it right, ain't I, preacher? Yeah, you are. Acts chapter 114, these all continued in one accord with prayer and supplication. There's two things you can preach on. I've been doing it 46 years that people will shut down on you. One of them is money. The other one's prayer. They will shut down on you. You know why? Because they don't do it. They will nod their head. They, they're going to get raw feelings. They get upset. But I'm telling you what the book said. This is a house of prayer. Amen. Romans 12 verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. There's that praise. Patient in tribulation, but continuing in instant prayer. Amen. Colossians 2, or 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11 said, Ye also helping together by prayer for us. 
You know what I'm, you know I'm going to start doing? I'll think about it. I asked Ted Ogle one time, I said, I'm getting ready to leave his house. He's working on my truck. I said, pray for me, Brother Ted. He said, no, I ain't. I said, what? He said, I'm not praying for you. Pray for yourself. You know why people would get offended to that? Because they don't pray. And I got offended at him. Matter of fact, I didn't just get offended. I got mad at him. And I wanted to say something to him, but I couldn't. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost is telling me he's right. You want everybody in this country to pray for you, but you won't pray for yourself. Amen. I'm doing good, ain't it? Program of prayer. Amen. He said, you helped. You prayed for us. That for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given unto many on our behalf. You know why you prayed for us? Now, let me ask you a question. Don't, don't answer me, but did you pray at all today? You don't have to nod your head, but did you one time pray today? You might say, well, you're talking about praying in the house of God. Exactly. And what are you? You're the house of God. Amen. It ain't just inside these walls. My wife's not here, so I wouldn't, but I wouldn't embarrass her anyway. But I'm going to tell you something. You ever ask my wife to pray for you? You mark one thing down. You mark down what I'm telling you. She'll go before God on your behalf. I've heard her. God, I don't, I don't know what they need, but Lord, they asked me to pray, so I'm bringing it to you. And man, she'll just get, she'll get in there with God. And I'm like, man, I, I, I wish I had that. And the Holy Ghost said you could. She ain't got the monopoly on it. Reason I don't have that, I don't pray like she does. Boy, it's good stuff, ain't it? Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything, in everything, in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Earl Hughes said, the way you start out praying, number one is praising, thanking him that you're saved, thanking him for what he's done in your life, then after that praise comes the humility that you have. And then you start talking to God, asking Him to cleanse you, asking Him to supply your need. Amen. Amen. Program of praise. You think we need it? Absolutely. These kids around here are not going to know nothing about God if we don't train them. They need to see Papa lose it once in a while. Amen. They need, some, they need to see the preacher lose it once in a while. Amen. They need to see Brother Dwayne lose it. His grandson needs to see that every once in a while. They need to see Brother Danny. Brother Danny's wife, Madeline, they need to see you lose it once in a while for his glory and his honor. Nothing wrong with it. Praise. And then the program of prayer. Well, here's the third one we got to have. This is where, this is where a lot of people are going to part ways with me when this goes on YouTube. They are going to part ways with me on this. Program of praise. Program of prayer. And then a program of the Psalms. Do you know what the word psalm means? Song. We need to have our music programmed. What, what, what do you mean by that? Well, you shouldn't ask. But I'm going to show you what the Bible, you don't care if I show you what the Bible says, do you? And I'm, I'm going to say this, there's a lot of contemporary songs. If you took the music out of it and you could hear the words, there's some good words in them. But the music is so crazy, you think you're at a rock concert. And then there's teenage girls up dancing and twisting and showing their body off in church. And they're dancing with but I'm not talking about out at bar. I'm talking about in the house of God. Rubbing on each other. Hugging everybody. There was this guy one time we was in meeting and he came around. He's hugging all these women. 
when he come to my wife, and I was watching him. When he come to my wife, he'd run his arm right up in front of their breast and reach around and hug them and pull himself into them like that so I could feel their breast. It's a preacher. When he come to my wife, I just stepped in front of her and I said, move on. You know what music was going on that night that put everybody in that mood? It was appealing to the flesh, crazy music, and everybody's up dancing and carrying on. I was sick in my stomach the time I left there. You know why? Music, music is important in the house of God. Amen? Now, I'm not going to be mean to you. I'm going to tell you what the Bible said. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Would you look at it, verse 16? I want you to look at it with me because I don't want to say nothing that ain't in the Bible, okay? A psalm, a psalm, or the songs that David and Hezekiah and Solomon, and these men wrote, were moved by the Holy Ghost of God to convey what God was trying to say. Amen. So, here's what we do. We'd rather have music that says more than the words. Nothing wrong with good music if it's right. But when you get that jungle beat and that beat that keeps appealing your flesh and it's got your flesh wanting to dance and move your body in ways that's not right, you better listen to me. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You know who the head guy is over that? In the beginning, Satan was the choir director in heaven. He had created within him pipes and tambrets. And he was the choir leader. So when God kicked him out of heaven, he brought his music with him. Except he put a sinful twist on it. And he's doing it in the name of Jesus. Just listen to your Bibles. Let, let the text talk. Colossians 3.16 let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of who? God, who giveth to all men, all men liberally. So if you want to know whether something's right or not, ask God. Well, how do you know to ask him? Right there. What did the book say about it? What did the text say? Look what he said. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching. Number one. Number two, admonishing. Teach them. Boy, couldn't you imagine? When they'd write the Psalms, Brother, Brother Dwayne, David wrote, wrote Psalm 51 and his repenting and calling his sin out. And I mean, just I'm going on, I, I mean, just letting it rip. And that, you know what he you know what he does with Psalm 51? He walks up to the choir director and hands it to him and said, This is gonna be our song today. Teaching, admonishing. Music ought to teach you something. Music ought to admonish you to do what? Praise. Prayer, going right back to it. It all goes hand in hand. Amen. If you're going to have the right music, the right psalm, the right song, you'll have the right praise. Amen. Music, music ought to cause you to want to praise him, not the group. Music ought to bring you to repentance. I've been sitting in church for nobody preaching, but they get singing and the words are right in that song. The Holy Ghost is, I mean, he'd tear me out of frame. That's what music ought to do. Notice now, we got to hurry. Notice this now, admonishing one another in psalms or songs. Now that's the piece of music. Listen to what I'm saying. That's the piece of of music. What is it? It's the words in the music. They got to be wholesome. They got to be right. They got to be godly. Amen. Then notice and hymns. Now it goes from psalms to hymns. The psalm is the piece of music. The hymn is the praise of that music. You see in that? It's a hymn. You know what a hymn is? A hymn is something sacred and holy. You know why they don't call us contemporary music hymns? Because they're not. Amen. Listen to me. 
The piece of music is the song. The hymn is the praise. And the Bible said hymns and spiritual song. It's plain. God laid it down plain. If it's not spiritual, then it's sensual. Amen. Uh, a lot of singers, they sing to appeal to the crowd there that they've captivated. I've been to a couple concerts. And I, I've, been, I've seen a couple. And those singers, when they get on stage, they're appealing to the crowd that's there. If they're a cowboy... If there's, if there's 90,000 people there, 90,000 of them will have a cowboy hat or cowboy boots or a cowboy belt or a cowboy shirt. You know why? Because that's the crowd they draw. Please listen to me. Music is going to draw a crowd. You could have a certain group in this church announce it, and by Saturday, you wouldn't have to tell too many people about it. It'd be packed, especially if it's songs sung about sensuality. Please listen to me now. Singing, listen to this phrase. The piece of music is a song. The hymn is the praise. The spiritual songs, it's very plain. And then he said singing with grace. Singing with grace in your heart. This is holy, harmonious singing to the ear of the inner man. I don't care if you get mad at me. If that inner man is not getting it before your flesh is getting it, God ain't in it. I don't care what you say. It's harmonious to the ear. It's acceptable to God and it proceeds with grace that's been wrought in your heart by the Holy Ghost of God. When old John Newton penned it down, he said, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. You know what John Newton was listening to? The prayers of his mother. You need to give your heart to the Lord. And he ran and he ran and he ran and he ran till he couldn't run no more. And then God found him and saved him. And I'm going to tell you something. You ain't going to improve on amazing grace. Amen. But we're old fogies. So, uh, Ephesians 5, 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, again, and spiritual song, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Are y'all listening to this? I wonder how many of them words are to the Lord. Psalm 66. Listen to what your Bible said. Psalm 66, verse 4. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Amen. I'm not against every contemporary song. It depends on how you define contemporary. To me, some of this crazy stuff I ain't interested. Don't have a problem with chain breaker. Not a problem with chain breaker. Unless a group sings it in sensuality. I don't have a problem with amazing grace unless a group sings it in sensuality. And there is a difference. Let me give you something here. Let me give you something to think about. Lamentation. You might want to write this down. Lamentation chapter 3 and verse 60. Three. Man, I wish, I wish that I gave that to Brother Chris so he could have popped that up there. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 63. Talking about here's when God said, Behold, they're sitting down and they're rising up. And listen what the next phrase said. God said, I am their music. Could, could some of these groups sing what they're singing and God still say, I am their music? If he can't say he's their music, then it ain't right. Boy, am I doing good. 
See, I was talking about you got to cooperate with the programs. <laughs> Colossians 3, verse, or chapter 2, verse 23. Colossians 2, 23. I'm going to close. I want you to listen to me. Colossians chapter 2, verse 23. I'd like for you to read this verse with me. Which things, which things indeed, or have indeed a show of wisdom? Now he's going to name them things. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom? And watch, watch what he does. In will worship. Y'all reading that with me? In will worship. Number two, and humility. Watch this. And neglecting of the body. Y'all seeing this? Not in any honor to satisfying of the flesh. In other words, if you've got a song that don't neglect the body, you got words that don't, if it hits the body first, you need to listen to me. Listen to this. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom? In other words, God has not commanded us to join the body or the spirit to any worship that is not profitable for your soul. Can I say that statement one more time? Which things have indeed a show of wisdom? God never commanded Wayne Ormby to take his body or his spirit to anything that will not bring honor to the Holy Ghost inside me. You join your body and your spirit to something that's not profitable, your soul, it's self-worth. All right, notice the second phrase, which things have indeed a show of wisdom. And we ain't got a problem with, uh, with that here, but I, I want to preach it so we don't have. Notice the second phrase, in will worship. Y'all see that phrase? It's simply a mode of worship which man chooses for himself. Man, you gotta come here this year. You gotta come, you gotta come here. I'm gonna tell you something. We have the foundations in here. They're not gonna make it big time. Not because they can't sing, them boys can sing. The reason they ain't gonna make it big time, they ain't gonna be in the big tents. Y'all listening to me? They want to please the Lord. That's like the young inspirations that's come out right now. Man, them guys, they, don't, they, don't, they didn't miss nothing from what the old inspirations did. I mean, them guys, you're talking about God? I sat in a tent meeting with them, and I'm, I'm wondering why we ain't up running all over the place and shouting and kicking sawdust 40 mile in the air. And you let a little contemporary group get up those ladies are dressed to where they shouldn't be dressed in a certain way. And everybody just oohs and ahs. And, am I telling it right or not? And you know what he said? It's in real worship. Man decides what and who he worships. Simply, simply a mode of worship that you choose for your flesh. And then he said, and humility. In other words, they pretend it's good. 